of a surprise is that some of these dates may be slipping. Uh, contracts that were supposed to be in place by the 1st of July aren't quite done yet. Um, apparently, they're now saying that the, the notices that they thought would go out on August 21st, notifying people of their termination, uh, won't be going out till mid to late September. And uh, I don't, you know, I heard that from somebody who heard that from somebody, so I don't know. Uh, but I think in a, in a massive change of this kind, it is, uh, it wouldn't be surprising if some of the dates uh, slid a little bit and the deadlines weren't met. Uh, so again, that's a mixed bag. The good news is maybe not so many people on the 1st of September. Uh, the bad news is it's it's still coming. You're, you're still going to have the crisis and the challenge that everybody is talking about today. Uh, but some of the dates in the legislation may be uh, a little bit uh, soft. Now, the other thing is that DSHS is now... Okay, wait a minute. Sorry. Next slide. Okay, so this is the... And, and Dave Hauser, when he talks, you may have different data. But the data I have is that in King County... Uh, 1,267 people have been on assistance for 12 to 19 months, and uh, on 20 months or more is 1,692. And so I figured out the 60% there. Uh, so the, on September 1st, it would be about 1,000 people um, in King County if that 40% holds true. And uh, it has thus far, but the latest data we have was for the middle of June, and all the reviews weren't done. But it seems like that's a pretty good number. So over the next year, uh, it would be a little less than 2,000 people in King County because it's not just September. I mean, people are going to hit this time limit in every succeeding month. It's just the, the biggest impact and the most dramatic impact will be that first month when those uh, notices go out. So um, just getting a little bit into the weeds, as they say in Olympia, um, about the program, but I think most of you are providers and are familiar with this. Uh, in order to be eligible for GAU, you have to have a physical or a mental uh, incapacity that prevents you from working that is not alcohol or drug alone. And the alcohol and uh, drug impaired people are on the ADATSA program. But many people, of course, on GAU do also have alcohol and drug issues on top of their physical and mental incapacities. And in the past, the law did not require uh, those people to participate in chemical dependency treatment because that wasn't the treatment that was most likely to return them to work. Their physical or mental incapacity would still be there. Uh, this change in law does require people as a condition of eligibility to participate in chemical dependency treatment. Um, that one uh, the section of the bill uh, went into effect on the 1st of July, uh, but again, I think w the actual implementation of that is going to um, slide a little bit. Um, and so we all know people who um, will lose their benefits because they'll refuse to participate in treatment, and we all know people who will benefit from being required to go to treatment. Um, and so this is just another aspect of the mixed bag uh, in this bill. The, the great thing, as has already been noted, is that new money came along with the requirement. And um, I know that we're all always grateful for new money. Um, so, and then this is where the, if they're actively engaged, it's really only the alcohol and drug treatment. When their uh, time limit runs, they're permitted to finish the um, treatment. Uh, if you were in treatment for some other physical or mental disability, this continuation uh, exception would not apply. Uh, now, the, you know, the for most people, it looks like 60% of the people uh, receiving benefits right now, it's a uh, temporary disability, and the goal is for everyone to return to work. And the legislature noticed that uh, perhaps people need uh, assistance in retraining or finding new careers or getting the supports they need to be able to return to work. And so a provision has been written in that will uh, have the Economic Services Administration coordinating a lot more with uh, the Division of Vocational uh, Rehabilitation, and they're going to develop an assessment tool and um, sort of do that in tandem. Um, and, and so in the future, uh, if... DSHS thinks that you will benefit from uh, vocational rehabilitation programs. Uh, the cl clients can be uh, required to um, 
participate in that, and if they uh, refuse to, uh, that's another way that their benefits could be uh, terminated for not r cooperating with a program requirement. except for medical and food. Sorry, reading my own slide. Um, it's their cash benefits that would be uh, terminated. Now, really, I think the most significant reform and the thing that I'm personally most excited about uh, in this legislation is the early SSI application project, transition project. Um, and I think that in different uh, communities, uh, DSHS handles people applying for SSI in different ways. And I know that here in King County, uh, those services have, the SSI facilitation services have always been far better than in many other parts of the state and that people have taken this really seriously. And so this may not seem as necessary to all of you as it does to people in other parts of the state. But, you know, if you talk to the clientele, they'll say, well, you get turned down three times by Social Security before you get approved. And one of the reasons for that is that the initial application is not uh, robust or correctly filled out or, you know, has all the documentation that is necessary for Social Security approval. Um, and so the legislature is really putting a focus on that by having this early uh, application process. And so after people have been apply, uh, approved for disability lifeline benefits, um, I think the intent of the legislation is that those uh, case files or whatever would re be referred to an outside contractor who would evaluate them for whether or not they should be eligible for the X program. And then for those who they think are, assist them in completing their SSI.